At about 3.55 p.m., the plane carrying South Sudan rebel leader Dr. Riyak Macha landed in the capital, Juba. <laughs> the former vice president turned the rebel leader later swore in as the new vice president of the unity government after a week's delay. Dr. Macha's return gives some assurance that the eight-month-old peace deal to end the two and a half years of civil war that has claimed thousands of lives and left many displaced could finally end. As hope springs the tunnel in Juba, spokesperson of South Sudanese embassy in Uganda, David Amol, believes that Dr. Macha and President Salva Kiel's reconciliation move will lead South Sudan to political and economic recovery. We are relieved from the burdens of uh, violence, and we will focus only on development, to develop that peace. Because we need to develop that peace in order for us to develop the nation as large. So we, we, are, we, we are quite happy. We are quite happy. I think at the moment in South Sudan we have reached a point that we, in the conflict resolution we call a point of ripeness. A point of ripeness is that point when both sides are very tired and they need a third party to help them. But a political analyst who is also an expert in peace and conflict studies is cautiously optimistic. Dr. Arthur Wainomugisha argues that the world's youngest nation that gained independence from Sudan in 2011 may not be out of the woods as yet, given the sharp tribal differences between the Nuwe and the Dinka. President Kill is a Dinka, while Dr. Macha is from the Nuwe tribe. There is still deep anger, and there is a desire for revenge, on both sides, and that's why the international community must make sure that, that the security guarantees, especially the Troika that funded the process. And mind you, every eye, every heart, every mind, every soul has been directed to watch on them. That's what makes them to make peace. But Dr. Wainomugisha says, the guarantors of peace in South Sudan, including the UN and IGAD member states, must propose tough sanctions on President Kill and Dr. Macha if they work against peace. The costs of renegading on these agreements are so high, and I think also the guarantors must make it clear to the, to the two top parties in the conflict, the key players, Riyak Macha and President Sirvaki, that renegading on this agreement, there are these sanctions. And so, uh, so that will motivate them towards implementing the, uh, on the argument and not cheating on the other. There are still suspected militia groups within South Sudan that are likely to wreak havoc despite the implementation of the peace agreement. But political analyst Arthur Bainomugisha believes that if a well-structured disarmament policy is put in place and a UN peacekeeping force deployed in the capital Juba, lasting peace can prevail. The militia question, there are so many militia groups and, 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 and which actually far out to number the professional arm of SPRA. So you have got to deal with the militias who are, who are, who are, who are trigger happy. So that's why the, the, it is important for the United Nations to, to deploy the UN peacekeeping force uh, to make sure that they, 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 they can even contain uh, these militias and then begin the process of DDR. That's disarmament, demobilization and reintegration of former combatants. Those who should be found with the no ranks and file existing, there will be a mechanism. Is either you, di <coughs> you disarm them using uh, the disarmament uh, process, which is a procedural way of taking back the unwanted soldiers for so many reasons. As President Kill and Dr. Macha begin implementing the peace deal, the country faces a humanitarian crisis with over 2.5 million people at the verge of losing their lives due to starvation. Habat Zua, NTV.